match. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Sportsman. We are back with Mikey and Joseph and myself. No Cormac this week, but we'll be just fine, I think, with Adam. But he was fantastic last week. Again, if you haven't seen that, go back to last week's episode and check that out. Uh, our guy is now fighting. He just He's the number one seed in uh, the March Madness tournament, and uh, we will be wishing him luck, and that's where we're going to head first. Uh, today, let's talk uh, Selection Sunday. Let's talk how everything shaped out, who we like, we don't like. We just filled out brackets today that I think we're going to go live with and sort of follow follow with uh, as the tournament moves on. But, uh, gentlemen, I'll start with this. Do you like your brackets? Do you feel confident in your brackets? No. No, I, I think the <laughs> – no, I, I'm just being – right. I think I think the brackets are just so, such a total uh, crapshoot uh, in general. And especially this year, I, I said in our group chat for Sportsman, I said – I I just think there's so many big name teams that are like just okay this year. Like I, yes, UConn, the number one seeds, of course, obviously have stood a little bit above the rest. I think UConn in particular, uh Houston in particular. And you know us, obviously, we're showing all the love to North Carolina and Cormac. But to be fair, like North Carolina has had their moments where I'm like, I'm surprised they lost this game. Clemson comes to mind, NC State in the tournament comes to mind. Like They've had games where I'm kind of like baffled by the way they came out. I just think that's the way this year's got Purdue, like Purdue lost to Ohio state and I have Purdue winning everything. Okay. And that, and oh. you know what, Joe, I, I it's the, it's, it is there. If time. that Edie kid can wake if, up yeah. and play the way that he can play, he's unstoppable they should be able to dominate un- everybody. He, if, and he makes free throws. If they game plan correctly, he is the most unstoppable player in the tournament. He is. But the problem is, is Purdue is just such a bad tournament team. They're just historically, yeah. like, as of late, they are just a bad, maybe this is the year. And I, I forget who I was speaking to yesterday. It may have been Dickie Gass, actually. But somebody was saying that they like Purdue to go very far this year. And I just, I have a tough time with that only because they're just historically hmm. so bad in, in tournaments. Yeah. I just... They've been so disappointing. The loss to FDU in round one last year, the year before that, they got knocked out. Uh, you know, I don't think they made it to the elite eight. I think they got knocked out no. before that. But, you know, I, that being said in the sportsman bracket, I do have them in the final four. Cause I went very chalky. I'm just very chalky. So I, I, I don't know, Joe. Who do, I you have winning? Who, who do you have winning? Out of respect. I took North Carolina. To win. Oh, out see, of, wow. Wow. Out of respect. I didn't have North Carolina in the final four. Oh, well. Oh no. See, now my one I mean, bracket, I, I, I hope brackets. I'm wrong, my, but my, my two brackets, one I don't and one I do. So I'm only doing two brackets. The one I have them, I have them going all the way. The other one, I don't have them in the final four either. I'm so against doing brackets like for money. Cause it's just like, if yeah. you have a team lose early on, like, you know, and, and then you have them in the final four or something like it's, it's just like, you're basically done at that point. Like yeah. you need yeah. to, you need to escape like the teams, like the final four teams you need to, you can't suffer like an early exit. Yeah. You got to get, the other thing is, get, is if you, you take get to the big upsets, 16. you got to get to the, yeah. oh yeah. Yeah. And if you take big upsets and then they don't happen, then it could, it just, it's just, it's such a crap shoot, man, because there's so much parody and this tournament there's so many upsets. Um, I was watching a thing, uh, this guy I follow on Instagram. He said he's going to take every single upset for the first round. And all he needs to do is hit like three or four of them. And he'll make all his money back because some of them are such high payouts that it's like, it's like some of them are like. You're plus, talking about, plus, you're talking about just gambling. It's kind of gambling. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm yeah. saying. It's not a terrible idea because you do see some of the, like Purdue lost to F. Like, I mean, that, that's a, that was Purdue was a number one seed last year, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, Tiki, I, who do you have winning? I uh, I went with UConn. I think they're going to go back to oh, that. repeat? You, I got UConn going far in both my brackets. I, I yeah. they're, they're strong. I think they are the most well-rounded team of, of all the teams, to be honest. I, I think they are. I think they're Houston a good mix of looks. Really good. Yeah, too, I just I, I think UConn could do more on the offensive end than Houston. Yeah, did. fair. But but Houston they both play they both play incredible defense. Um, but I like you're very I, bearish um, on on that Houston offense. You're very bearish on them. I am. I am. But yeah. I have them. I have them uh, going to the final four. I have them. Yeah, I'm going. Oh, to the final well, there four. you go. That's still good. 
So, um, Are, is your uh, final four all in one seats, Mikey? Yeah, chalky. <laughs> <laughs> now, in my other bra- in my other bracket, like I said, I did two. I, I have I have an eight seed, I think, in the final four. I think I, I think I had um, Mississippi State. I think I have in my one bracket. I have them going far. Uh, all the way to the final four, I believe, in my other one. Oh, really? Yeah. So I do definitely have uh, mix-ups in my other one, but this one, the sportsman one, I have, I have all the one seeds, and it, it is, it is sad and kind of not fun. But you guys maybe have different ones, and maybe people like that more. But I got it in final four. Let me just pull it up to make sure I got it. Um, my final four, I got Purdue, and I've got uh, Houston going up against each other. And then on the other side, I got Auburn and Baylor. And then I have Purdue wow. That's taking cool. out Purdue taking out Auburn in the final. What's your yeah. total score? 149. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah, I got North Fair Carolina enough. over Houston in my final. North Carolina over. I'd love North Carolina to do it. By the way, we don't have any money on these brackets. So, like, if they get obliterated, I mean, I would take it yeah. with a grain of salt. This is We're, not this is just in any more way, for fun for us to is, see how we can do. It's this is, not this is not something I want you guys tailing. Not in any way an endorsement of future betting of any kind. No. Please do not. And I don't no. want to hear it. Please, please. Don't. After my football <laughs> betting season, I, I would like to do well here. And I, I, I put a fair amount of thought into it. Um, so who do you have winning it all? Tech UConn over UConn. Who? I, yeah, over I've got who? UConn over Houston. Houston okay. beats Creighton in the final four. I have, I have Creighton. Creighton I have Creighton in my elite eight. I have okay. Yes, I have Creighton in my elite eight. Yep. All right. Yep. I like Creighton. Um, I think they'll beat Tennessee in the Sweet Sixteen. Uh, yeah, I have Baylor Joe in the Sweet Sixteen. I, I I don't mind that. Actually, I excuse me. I have Baylor in the elite eight. I have Baylor in my elite eight. As Baylor well. is solid, man. Losing to Carolina. I like Baylor all year. I bet them a lot. Another team, kind of a sleeper I have in the elite eight, uh, BYU. They're my low, lowest seed in the elite eight. BYU is not bad. They can shoot the three like crazy. I man. got BYU going there. Yep. What? What's I said matter? BYU was one of my favorite teams outside the top 10 last week, and y'all fucking scoffed at me. Tick, I got them in the elite eight. Maybe some consciously, that's why I was picking BYU, because something there you told go. me BYU, so that's probably what it was. The Storm and Mormons. Yeah, I love that. Um, well, every year when you fill out a bracket, what's the famous matchup that always has that upset? It's always a five and a twelve, right? Isn't there always? Isn't that like the notorious matchup that a twelve always beats five a five? And a twelve, and this year they're saying that it could be the James Madison Dukes. Wow. I but are they the Dukes okay. or the James Madison? Yeah, Dukes. Yeah, against the Wisco Badgers. That that's a lot. And of Wisconsin just won a big game, so I think a lot of people. Are, they just beat a beat Purdue, um, and I, I think a lot of people are going to take Wisconsin. Yeah, a lot I, of people. James are gonna Madison's be... only lost three games all year. They've been really good, and from what I understand, they're they're a senior heavy team. Like it's it's three out of the five starters are seniors. The other starters a junior, and then a redshirt freshman. So there's a lot of experience. I mean, uh, James Madison. They're, they're I, I'm hearing a lot of good things about James Madison. I'm not going to lie. I haven't watched a ton of James Madison basketball. I bet them this year and it turned out well for me, but sure. I haven't watched a lot of the basketball, but I, I got them going in the first round over Wisco. I do. And then I have them going to the sweet 16. I have them beating Duke in the next round. Oh, after that. Wow. <laughs> I have them finally losing to Houston in the uh, sweet 16. That's fun. Joey D give me your biggest round one upset that you have. Who's the biggest upset you've got. Let me see here. Hold on. Oh, I got um, <laughs> Florida losing to BCIS Colorado. Oh, well, it would and then be I U- have them- UVA or Colorado oh. State. Oh, no, no, no. You're no, right, it's Joe. Boise. It, it's Boise. It's Boise. It's Boise. 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 Boise State. <clears throat> Boise State or uh, Colorado. Right. I have either of those teams. I have that also. Florida, have and then also. I have either of those teams beating Marquette after that. Wow. Really? Oh, really? Yeah, no, I, have I, got, I, got, I, got, I have Marquette. I have Marquette taking out Western Kentucky, and then I have Boise or Colorado taking out Marquette. So that's mm. a big one for me. Yeah, but I, I mean, so. I don't know. I, it, you know, it's gonna be fun. We're all gonna be watching the games together yeah. at the Breezy Lounge, Five Iron Herald Square. Sure. Um, and it's gonna be fun, man. It's gonna be just some degeneracy. Going I'm looking. On. At, I'm looking at my bracket now. I have three 12 seeds winning in the first round. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> three. I have James Madison. I have McNeese over Gonzaga. 
<laughs> uh, and I have Grand Canyon over St. Mary's. Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. Oh, they won last year. Grand yeah. Canyon, dog. Listen, just saying. Grand Canyon. They were shooting the, the three like crazy. I have them going. That- oh, I got Grand Canyon all the way in the Sweet 16. Then I got them <laughs> oh beat. My I got them beat. I, you know why? Because I think Bama beats Charleston. Grand Canyon beats Mary's. Bama plays no defense. And against Grand Canyon, that could be a problem. That's why I took Grand Canyon over Bama. Bama's defense. Now, Bama could score. They could fucking score 100 points. But they, they'll they give up 100 points just as easy. They play no defense whatsoever. None. I so have, uh, I I have Texas that. I have Texas losing in the first round. Do you? The UVA or Colorado State? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got them losing in, in the round of 32 to Tennessee. I got them, I got them past first. But. And then I got New Mexico beating Clemson. I have that also, Joe. Me New too. Mexico's a great. I've been I've been yeah. taking them all year. They're a great team. Yeah. The, the Lobos. old Lobos. The Lobos. Yeah. But then they're gonna run into the Baylor well, Bears, and that that's gonna be a blood. Yeah, death. that'll be a problem. That'll be a problem. Yeah. <clears throat> my my I, biggest upset is St. Peter's beating Tennessee. Come on. Might be oh, might be a mistake. Yeah. Might be a mistake. Hey, listen. Those boys Tennessee from those boys from Jersey, those boys from Jersey could play, dog. Those I Jersey know. teams, those yeah, Jersey teams, but sixteen seeds, they're dangerous. They're very dangerous. I know they made a push. Was it two years ago? Two but years like, ago, you, you all can't the just, way to the you elite eight. It's going to run it back. But you got to take some shots when you're filling out a bracket. You, do. you know some you do. shots are going to happen. You got it. You got to risk it. You got to try. Here's and the I, reason I why I don't take too many shots because a lot of the times. Like these upsets in the first round, they get obliterated the next game. Yeah. So it's very rare yeah. that like one of those like 16 seeds goes like two, three rounds deep. Well, but that's why the the St. Peter's run was nuts because they got all the way to the elite. I know. And they lost. They were Carolina. taking out everybody. They, they were taking everybody. They out. beat Purdue. I mean, they they were out of control, that team. They were awesome. That was an awesome run. Epic, epic run that year. Any other shock? I mean, so you you don't think you don't think CFC College of Charleston could could beat that Alabama team? I'd like to see. Them I make think a anybody push. could beat that Bama. Team Alabama doesn't play, play defense. defense. Yeah, yeah. But they, score, they, they don't play defense. They score but like crazy. I'll give Bama the benefit of the doubt that if they score like ninety or something like that in round one, they'll probably win. But in the Have next, you taken round, any overs in Alabama games this year? It's been fun. Taking overs. I take it over in Alabama game. <laughs> and their overs are ridiculous. They're set at like in the 170s, which in college is, is nuts. 170. First halves, uh, like 80 point first half uh, total. They just which chuck up threes, man. Yeah, yeah. They Them and them in Florida were fun to bet overs on because when Florida, before there, see Florida to me was, and we said this last week, I said Florida was a team that I thought could have made a legitimate tournament run. Once the big guy broke his ankle in the first couple minutes mm. of the uh, SEC championship game, to me, that was it. Like, now I I think they're finished. You know, they're a big rebounding team. Uh, he was a part of the reason for their success, like, in a big way, I thought. So I, I think that that kind of ended their run for me. But I really liked the Gators prior to that. It's a shame. Mikey, you said before you really liked Duke a few weeks ago. Do I you did. Still, yeah, do you still off. like them, or are you off the Duke train? I'm off Duke. I'm off Duke right now. I, and uh-huh. I think going into the tournament, you know, it's like it's tough to say, like, weeks weeks in advance, like, who you like, because it's kind of what do they look like heading in? And, I, man, just Duke, I don't know, dog. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not as, like, big on them as I was. But then again, like NC State, a team like that, who I think maybe NC State's the hottest team in the country. One of the hottest teams, not the hottest, UConn is, but, and and so is Houston. But NC State, to me, after winning the ACC tournament in the fashion that they did and the teams that they beat to beat there, including North Carolina, I mean, they 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 look like a very, very tough team, NC State. So they're going to, I'm, I'm curious to see, are they going to kind of like crap out? They got Texas Tech in the first round. That's a tough game for them. Are they going to just now? I have them beating them and playing Kentucky in the next round. Are Kentucky's gonna, a team to watch damn. for too. Kentucky's the biggest liability on the books right now to win the whole thing. Oh, Everybody man. and their mother is betting Kentucky future. That's the biggest Kentucky liability. Kentucky will the either they'll either bang you or they'll come through and just like you know you know another team is uh, Iowa State just demolished Houston. Yeah. I mean, and Houston you know, defensively looked so good they couldn't they couldn't hold Iowa State was on fire. 
So, you know, it'll be interesting. It'll be Iowa fun. State's going to be... run all the way until they hit those boys from BYU, Tick. Mm-hmm. And they're get derailed <laughs> until they get by the stormed Mormons. by some Mormons. Yeah, sure. Um, I got Vermont beating Duke in the first round. The Catamounts. Whoa. Another, it's another shot. The it's another Catamounts. shot in the dark. Good. Yeah. Good. We'll I see. like that. We'll see. Yo, let me tell you something. Vermont's good. Vermont's always a good team. So that's, uh, that's, if ever, like Duke is just, I could just so see Duke get knocked out in the first or second round this year. I, I yeah. just can. They, like, they as normally to seeing them make just, a late run. I don't know. The last, like, it seems like the last while, they really haven't made a, a push for a long time since Zion. And then when they lost to Michigan State, like, they really haven't done, they haven't last been a year. Didn't succeeds. they do well last year? I thought they went pretty far last year, didn't they? Or am I wrong? But I'm saying they haven't been to a Final Four, and they're always one of the high, most highly touted teams every single year. They're so highly yeah. bet on and followed. I don't know. Well, they I, made it's... they played North Carolina in the Final Four, right? Like two wasn't that two years ago when they played? They played in the Final Four. Might have been North two Carolina years ago. Beat? I don't yeah. remember last year. Yeah, it was sick. I remember. I remember. Uh, I remember was how it the high Final Four or was it the Elite I, Eight? No, because North Carolina beat St. Peter's in the Elite Eight. Hmm. I'm pretty sure it was 2022. Yeah. Yep. 81, right, 77, North back. Carolina. Yeah. I, I, I knew that back. I knew but I'm saying, like, oh, I know for the most part, you've been right, Joe. For yes. the most part. Yes. All yes. I'm saying is yes. like yeah. Duke is like, they're like a team that people like historically are all in on to like win yeah. the tournament and do. Yeah. And they're really like, they for many, many years, they just kind of fall short. They just don't, they don't live up to the expectation many years. Sure. Sure. And, uh, well, there's a lot of winners, schools who made it in there, didn't think they had a shot. They squeaked in. There's always losers. And there's one school, a dear friend of ours, Nicholas Stubbe, his Richmond Spiders were one of the first oh. four teams out. Yeah, I got a lot of oh, friends, too. Uh, I got some friends very <laughs> pissed off that Seton Hall didn't make the tournament this year. Sure, that's another one. Oh, they're a New yeah. Jersey school, right? Yeah, yeah. Isn't yeah. Frank the Tank a, a new a Seton Hall guy? Big a lot, of, a lot of people yeah. around where I live are Seton Hall guys because it's in West Orange. It's very, it's They're like a pretty it, solid it's team, though. No, they were the first team ever that did X amount of things during the regular season. I can't rattle off what they were, but they were the first team to ever do those things and miss the tournament. So people were like really, really pissed off that they got the that they didn't get the nod for the tournament, but. That's the way it is. Marquette, I probably have going farther than I should. I don't think Marquette is going to, I don't know. To me, in the in the Big East tournament, they, they shouldn't even have beat Villanova. So to me, it was kind of like, I, I'm not sold on Marquette from watching them. But they're a two seed, and I think a lot of people have them going pretty far, but I'm not sold on them. Yeah, I got them on the, in the Elite Eight. Yeah. And it sounds, I mean, I do too, but six, just, uh, I'm not sold on them. Okay. I, I'm just not. I'm just not. <laughs> um all right guys well before we move on to some of the football conversations is there any last minute you know things you want to say about the conference tournaments anyone in the in the tournament here or do you, should we just move on no i thought the tournaments were good i thought you had some moments that were crazy the akron game against uh against kent state that was, was nuts what was that kid doing i mean that's a chris <laughs> that's a chris weber moment man that's just not knowing what's Did he going think that on they were losing he, he or had, like i mean obviously he had to he had to and and that, i mean what? that's a shame that's a shame because How he probably would have won the game, game and not i mean unless akron hits some crazy shot. by the way that nc state game to go to overtime was insane too yeah the kid who just threw chucked up a prayer and it Bank was open, man. Yep. And listen, like I said, Marquette Villanova was nuts. Marquette hits a buzzer beater. They take it off the board. It goes to overtime. Villanova's hanging the whole overtime. And then all of a sudden at the end, oh yeah. Marquette pulls we away. Needed Marquette. Mean, yeah, we it was needed a, that bad. It was a, it was a it was it was good. I thought the conference tournaments were I mean, they're, they're always good. I just hate betting them because in those type of games where you got teams that have seen each other already twice, usually, um, for the most part. On a neutral court, it's just so hard to handicap those games because it's just anything can yeah. happen in these tournaments, man. Like you'll see now in 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 the, in the big tournament, it's gonna be fucking crazy. But this is the best. Like this next like five days is without football. This is the best time of sports, really. Without football, it's yeah, it's really doubt. really fun. It's Thursday's really fun. gonna be awesome. Friday's gonna be awesome. Thursday and Friday are so great. They're just great. They're just great. It's just start to finish. It's just like it's all just day. an overload. All it's day. It's an overload. All day. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. I'm gonna be flying on Thursday. I'm gonna miss a lot of these games. I'm pretty bummed about it. But Friday. What time do you get in Thursday? Us, Tick? We'll be locked in. I get in, I think around like three two thirty, three. 
It's not. So we, got Car- we got Carbone at six. I don't want any bail jobs. We do. Jobs. We do. Okay. I so would I'm never gonna, I'm bail gonna meet, on a car I'm meet you guys there. there. I'm going to meet you guys there. I begged you to go last time. And I, I couldn't. No, no, no. Joe. Oh, Joe. He, and him and, him and uh, another friend and our friend Teddy went. Couldn't get a seat. But, you know, maybe he thought I was going to bail. So that could have been. Um, <laughs> <laughs> real quick on that NC State, uh, State team. They're spunky. I kind of like. I mean, I'm not saying I they're like going to win too, something. I like them too, dude. They've got spunk, dude. They're the fun. Big, team the to big watch. fella burns. Yeah. That he, guy is a he, beast. He's a he hoss, bro. He's like, <laughs> that's like, that's like watching me run up and down the court. I mean, he is just a big dude, man. He's he's a tank. He's a tank. When he gets into that low post, dude, he oh, just he just oh. backs up. Man. Yeah. <laughs> that's just that's a, that that I think is one of the more the most fascinating teams entering the tournament. I, again, I want to see is NC State going to carry the momentum from the ACC tournament, or did they? I don't like to say it; it's a little vulgar, but did they blow their load in the ACC tournament and now they're going to kind of like they're going to run out of gas for the big tournament? I th- if they don't and they can carry that momentum, they're going to be very tough to beat. Like they could bully a Kentucky if it's them in Kentucky in the round of thirty two and they're playing the way they play. They could bully that team because Kentucky's a little soft. Is to say blow your load? Is that is that vulgar? Yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. It, it is. I yeah, feel like I, it I, is, I, but well, like it is a common phrase. I mean, I feel like yeah, it's a common. I feel phrase like it's amongst 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 the fellas. Sure, amongst it's still vulgar in amongst, the locker room amongst the men of sports. Yeah, <laughs> in the locker room, oh, okay. locker room talk. Uh, I mean, we're in the locker room. This is what we sure. call our recording studios, the locker room. I'm sure. <laughs> well, yeah, don't look too far into that. Um, <laughs> nice all right, let's pillows. move. <laughs> let's move <laughs> on to the NFL. I mean, first of all, congratulations are in order, Mikey. Two big things happen. You got Keenan Allen, first of all. Wow, yeah, that's, that's exciting. Then yeah. he got fleeced. Yeah, uh, he he didn't sound like you're over the moon about it, but you, you got to be. I mean, he's he's a great player. He might be on the back end of his career, but no, I, I mean, mean, listen, the Bears has gets nothing. Hurt so the, much. Bear, the Bears had nothing at wide receiver after uh, DJ Moore. I mean, especially after Darnell Mooney got picked up in free agency by Atlanta, like there was there they needed something. So that's a good piece. I don't think they're done. I think they could still go wide out in the draft at nine if if things fall mm-hmm. the right way. They could go Malik Neighbors. They go Roman uh, Adunze. I, Odunze, Odunze would be great. I, 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 everyone's high on this neighbors though. All the chatter this week is yeah. how, how these teams have neighbors. Their number one wide out. He had a couple over games. Marvin Harrison, which to me, over again, here. but no yeah. the neighbors had a massive. I, I understand that. But if I'm the GM and I look at them too, I, I, and it's not biased, I just think Marvin is a camp because of his size. I just think he, and neighbors isn't a small guy by any means. Um, but he's not Marvin Harrison big. Like I just, I don't know. I prefer a bigger target. This is what infuriates me every time the college football season ends and we get close to the draft is these people, these guys have said for years, or at least a year, Trevor Lawrence is the best. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. is a can't miss. Then as soon as the season's done, yeah, all of yeah. a sudden we're starting yep. like, well, actually this neighbor's guy. Yeah. Might, well, no, but yeah. why are we changing our opinion? Yeah, because it's so, you're because so James Daniels know, but was you're just so going to him gone. all the time. You're so far gone from the season, and now you got people saying that Caleb isn't the number one quarterback. Right, and of that's, course, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's, it's just, it's. It, what are we talking about? I mean, Caleb's been the consensus number one pick for three years in this class. Literally three years. I do think whoever Oklahoma. gets Penix or Gene Daniels is going to get a nice value play. Penix, they're not even talking about Michael Penix I anymore. don't understand it's how. It's insane. I don't understand they're, how that's all you're possible. hearing. All you're hearing about is obviously Caleb, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, high Jake item, going to and, be a boss. and J.J. McCarthy. That is like one of the hottest I don't names. know how J.J. McCarthy, Yikes. how did he go over Bo? Or uh, or fucking like, uh, I don't understand. Here's my thing about J.J. McCarthy. If you watch his big game tape, he makes some throws in the biggest moments of the biggest games where you're like, he has that certain factor that you can't quite uh, quantify. And I I respect the shit out of that because he's he was a killer. Against Ohio State, he was a killer. He made plays in those games. Yeah, but in would the you national go Bo Nix or would you in go the, J.J. McCarthy? In, Come in on. The, in the game against Alabama, they had to have that last drive. He did it for him. I respect that. My thing about J.J. is that I don't know how much tape on him you could really take in because it felt like 
it felt like Harbaugh had him on a leash. He only let him throw X amount of times per game. It's not like he was letting this kid cut loose. So for me, is there enough tape on J.J. McCarthy to have seen all the different types of throws over and over and over again to really know what I'm getting if I'm going to take him that high? But he, make no mistake about it, Joe. He is the hot ticket item talked about right now. I mean, they're talking about Minnesota trying to use the two first round picks. The second one they just acquired from Houston to move up into the top 10 to draft him. So, I mean, the giants, the giants just hosted him. The giants hold the sixth overall pick. They just hosted him for a dinner out in New York. He was there for like a, a two nights or something like that. So he's, he's a hot that, commodity. This arm guy. strength is not that great. I don't Mike. disagree. I don't, they I relied listen. on the run all year. He, 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 yeah. he benefited from one of the best running games in all of college football. To me, he is a massive, massive gamble, but could he just be one of those guys that just, has that weird factor that like a Brady you, that you can't quite quantify. Again, you can't quite put yeah. your finger on what it is. It's just, he's got it. And some of these other guys don't, maybe that's the case. Personally. I, again, I think if you're going to draft a quarterback and you have a top five pick uh, you go with, you know, you just have to go with the consensus. Who's going to be and that guy for the bears anyway, is Caleb. And you just have to live and die by it. If you swing on Caleb and he misses, I don't think anybody could really fault you for it because every GM in the world is saying that he's the best one. So, you know, in that respect, I don't think you could miss on that. You almost, you almost are obliged to take him just you because are. If, you are. if you yeah. don't, if you don't, and he lives up to that expectation, oh, then my, you're, you're going to be the laughing you're stock. You're fired. You're going to be the laughing stock of the league for, for years. Yeah, I agree. And especially when you're seeing like the bears that have struggled to find a, a franchise quarterback for a long, long, long time. Forever. You, you got to go with the obvious, the, the just the the straight up obvious pick is Caleb Booms. But there's guys like Bo Nix and then Penix I, I, and even Gene Daniels. The fact that they're like, you know, those three guys, I think that they have the arm strength, they have the mobility, they have the, the, the wherewithal. I, I don't know how McCarthy gets – mentioned over any of those three quite frankly uh, it's crazy to me imagine Penix next year throwing a Metcalf how exciting oh, that would be yeah 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 that would be a nice spot for him Penix to Metcalf yeah forget um, about the, the the yeah the Twitter account but yeah, yeah. the Twitter account in yeah. reality <laughs> though Seattle's a spot that I would think I they, mean why they would they not up, want a quarterback yeah they need to come up with a contingency plan for Gino I, in my opinion, I think they they need yeah. to come up with some kind of plan without Drew Locke there anymore, and just there has to be some kind of plan B behind Gino. And and I think Penix, I mean, especially the fact that again, I haven't even seen his name being mentioned anymore as being. And meanwhile, had he not had the game he had against Michigan in the national title game, had he come out and lit that game up, he would a hundred percent be talked about as. So what are you going to hang one bad game? Number one, he was clearly hurt. He was hobbling that game. He yeah. was not right. Number two, Michigan was the best team. Michigan was was dominating that football game from start to finish with their offense, their their line play on both sides. Like it just it's it's just it's just it's it's such a hot and cold kind of a take with Penix for me because he was so great yeah. for the last two years and. Now you're not hearing anything about him. I I almost going like, back to Seattle though. You don't man. think Sam Howell's going to challenge Geno for the top spot, do you? Yeah, I guess Sam Howell's a decent contingency plan behind Geno. He is. He looked solid to start the year off. I thought then, so too. Yeah, he, he had, had such a bad line, line that yeah. it's like you know the guy was running for his life as a rookie. Yeah, no, I, mean, I that's forgot. Not a good I, position I honestly to be in. forgot about Sam. Howell. Sam Howell that's, went to the Seahawks. I, I still. Think that, yeah, maybe then that's going to be the pass on a quarterback then. So. Yeah, well, we've got uh, several other quarterbacks on the move. Uh, two big names heading to Pittsburgh: uh, Russell Wilson, paying you know playing for almost nothing, and then Justin Fields, who they got for almost nothing. Um, I Steelers mean, Steelers are the big winners, man. I think they are too. I mean, I I I don't think Russell's going to play the whole season. I think he's going to get hurt, or he's going to look. I hope he uh, doesn't. A, atrocious to the certain point where they're going to bring fields in but I so. um oh, i'd God. say second week of the year. like bandits i hope it's the second week of the year because the bears that six round pick would turn into a fourth round pick if he plays 51 yeah, percent of the snaps so that's big even I, fourth I, I round for a potential franchise quarterback is yeah. is pennies listen, on the dollar li man. listen i mean that's the bottom line is this the league told you what they thought of justin fields 
That's the bottom line. And and the, the Bears could say however much they want that they turned down better offers because they wanted him to be in a situation he wanted to be in. Apparently, him and Mike, uh, Mike Tomlin have a good relationship. He wanted to play for Mike Tomlin. It was a good spot for Justin. So maybe they did turn down a, a fifth rounder in 2025 for Fields. But I'm telling you this, they didn't turn down a second rounder this year or a third rounder this year. It wasn't something like he that. Would have been they, gone. they would have pulled the trigger on that because business is business at the end of the day. The market for fields was just not there. And it was, it was, it was there even less. There was there was even less of a market than I expected. I thought for sure they would get a low end second, maybe a high end third for him. The fact that they couldn't even get that, like. But I, I can't blame the other GMs in the league because if you look at Justin Fields' tape as a quarterback throwing the ball, it's not good. It's just not good. There's no consistency. He has a game where he'll throw four touchdowns, 300 yards, but the majority is 150 yards, 160 yards, a couple turnovers sprinkled in, maybe one touchdown pass. He's, he's, a, he's a legs-driven quarterback. Maybe that'll change. But his processing needs to get faster and he has to get rid of the ball. He's got to get rid of the ball quicker. He holds the ball too long. Uh, if he could somehow overcome those really bad habits that he's gotten into, then perhaps he will do good in Pittsburgh. Now, maybe Pittsburgh, he turns it around. I, I don't know. I'm rooting for him too because I love the I guy. Think but I think he's going to. Well, I think he's going to sit behind Russell for the first time. He's going to have an opportunity to study the game, really get some experience not be pressured to go out and be the guy right out of the gate. And I think like maybe after one year, maybe two Russell's gone and they're just going to hand him that starting position. And you see like quarterbacks who have an opportunity to sit in the trenches and just be able to observe and like hone in on their craft have for the most part been quite successful. I mean, I mean, the Packers have made a living off of doing that. So I, I'm not saying that he's going to turn overnight, but I think when you're playing with the guy who, whether or not he still has it. Russell is a he's a very accomplished quarterback. He's won a Super Bowl. He's been multiple times. Quite frankly, he should have won two Super Bowls. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, oh, I yeah. mean, all, all intents and purposes. But I think when you have a guy like that, it's going to be a real mentor to Justin Fields. And, and listen, the raw talent is there. Like he's, from an athletic standpoint, one of the most gifted quarterbacks that I've seen in many years like his ability to make plays and extend plays and make things happen it's it's awesome to watch he just needs to learn and really develop and mature as a, as a quarterback and I think he's going to get an opportunity to do that yeah I mean I think he's in a much different position he gets to sit behind Russell and Russell seems excited to have him there I'm sure he's going to learn from him like you just mentioned the coaching staff is obviously better to help mentor him and, and help him uh, progress and get better. And it's going to be a better offensive line for sure than at least the one he had last year. I know that the Bears are doing working on to making it better for this coming year, but yeah, I just no, think that, it's, it's it's one of the best situations he could have landed in. I think that's another thing. Like, yeah, and you say that ticket. It's funny because all of Bears fans and Bears Twitter and Bears beat writers and. There's this sentiment going around that the Bears did fields so dirty and that the Bears, look at what the Bears have done, ready-making this team for Caleb Williams now to step into the, one of the best situations, which get, do not get it twisted. Caleb Williams is walking into one of the best situations a rookie quarterback really could ever walk into. There's going to be no excuses. But it's not like this happened overnight. Let's not get it twisted. When Ryan Pace drafted Justin Fields, it was a disservice to Justin Fields. It was a last gasp attempt by a, a by a lame duck GM and head coach in Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace to try and grab a guy to save their jobs. That's what that was. They restructured all these contracts of big name guys. The next year when they got fired, the whole team had to get ripped down. The whole team had to get torn down. Poles had to come in, tear down the whole team and build it back up. And what has he done in two off seasons? This guy has transformed this roster into a seven win football team, probably should have been a 10 win football team. And now he's rolling in and possibly grabbing the best prospect in the last, however many years at the quarterback position. He's done a very so good job. I'm not buying the bears did Justin so dirty. If Justin had shown the ability to operate a pocket with consistency he would still be a Chicago Bear, and the Bears would have traded that number one overall pick for a historic 
Hall. The problem is, like every other team in the league, they simply don't see the value in, in fields, especially that if he does ball out, you're going to have to then pay him rather than mm-hmm. resetting the, the rookie contract, quarterback contract uh, timeline. It's just, it, it, it just I, I don't want to hear the narrative of, of the Bears did Justin so dirty and the Bears built a, a super team now for Caleb. Owens. That's nonsense. They've been- I definitely the think that they, I definitely think, and I agree with you that they experienced every opportunity for him to succeed and yes. gave him every chance. And ultimately, I mean, they obviously- they look at it and they're like, listen, based on what we've seen, we we have to go with Caleb. I, I, I think if Caleb wasn't simple. there and they don't have a top end, That's you know, a different number story. one QB, then different maybe story. they do keep him longer. But I do think they they definitely gave him the benefit of the doubt. They didn't get rid of yeah. him on the first chance. Right. And when he was healthy again, they didn't, you know, they let him come back instead of the sensation that was Tyson Badgett. Oh, Badgett. <laughs> love, love, to love. Was it Tyler or Ty? Is it Tyson? Yeah, Tyson. Is it Tyson? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Tyson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Badger. Great guy. The Division II phenom. Sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you not worried a little bit about the ego of Caleb Williams, though? Because um, on a personality level, he seems like a fucking dickhead. Who's at the I, players? I am as concerned about Caleb Williams as, as you could possibly be. But I'm in a position where, you know, th- th- it's just that's what it's going to be. And, and, yeah. If it doesn't work out, I'm just going to throw my hands up in the sky and say that this team is just destined to never have a quarterback because <laughs> they've traded for them. They've drafted them. They've they've done everything you possibly could to try and answer the question, and they get it wrong every single time. If they get it wrong again with Caleb, a guy who's been touted as a possible generational talent, a slam dunk, can't miss number one overall pick for the last three years coming into this class, Tick, I, I'm as concerned about him and all the bullshit off the field as anybody is. Trust me, I, I am. I'm just hoping that the guy can win football yeah. games. I'm hoping he I mean, can he's come gonna in have and win pieces. football games. You he's guys got, got now yeah. Keenan Allen, got DeAndre DJ Swift. Moore, Cole Komet, yeah. DeAndre Swift. If you get a top tier wide receiver in the first and with your the ninth pick, either neighbors or dunes, I mean, I mean they'd you be loaded. Guys are gonna they'd have be loaded. Yeah. One of the best receiving corps in the in the NFL. If they add a Dunze neighbors or marvin harrison it is the well, best i don't think it's, they'll get harrison it, not even if they don't it's the best if they get a dunce or neighbors it's the best receiving core in the nfl in my opinion i i, I don't see well, how maybe you, not better than the dolphins with uh tyreek and Waddle. I think, it, I think it's better three deep i think dj Moore, keenan and, and either one of those rookies i think as a as a as a core oh I sorry maybe the bank the Bengals too is pretty if good. higgins stays if higgins yeah. stays if they don't actually trade him and i don't know what's going on with tyler boyd he's a free agent nobody's gotten him i don't know why yeah. i think he'd be a great wide receiver three I think I'd love the Packers to grab him. Sure. I, I, I would love the Bears to get him. I think he would be great, but that is what it is. This is what it is. Um, moving on, a friend of the program, Kenny Pickett to the Eagles, leaving Pittsburgh, heading to think, Philadelphia. I love it. I love yeah. the guy. <laughs> I messaged him when it happened. I was thrilled. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, because just he like might, he might play some some games. I was going to say he might play. Oh, he'll, oh, he he'll might need him. He'll play. He'll, he's definitely he going to play at some point because the way Jalen plays, he, eventually Jalen will get banged up one game or, he'll, you know, he'll miss a half or he'll miss a game or something. Just his style of play is just conducive to that. So, I mean, you're going to see Kenny Pickett at some point. I would think. I'd be surprised if you didn't. I would feel like he would have an opportunity to succeed with a really good offensive line and with all the weapons they have and then Saquon there. Like, I mean, you have, you have like – arguably a top five to seven wide receiver with AJ Brown. And then you look on the other side, you get the slim reaper and then yep. you got Goddard. I mean, dude, you mm-hmm. got, I mean, he's got, he's going to have weapons like he never had in Pittsburgh. Saquon. And I know Deontay Johnson, Saquon catching out of the backfield. I understand yeah. that, you know, Pickens is great, but like he was kind of on and off. Like there were some games he was nowhere to be seen. Like, I think he's going to such a better atmosphere. And another guy I think is going to really benefit from being able just to not have all the weight of the world on his shoulders. Some of these franchises, like Pittsburgh, for example, the, the expectations the spot. expectations from the tough fans yeah. are so high. To come in as a rookie quarterback and, like, you know, you're really, like, not exactly, like, a top-tier contending team. 
to be successful. It's like, it's very, very, it's a lot of pressure, man. Kenny, Kenny, I think, Kenny was behind the eight ball for two reasons in Pittsburgh. Number one, he's replacing Ben Roethlisberger. He, he, replacing a Hall of Fame quarterback is never, never an easy task. Um, number two, that year, if you remember that draft, it was a horrific draft for quarterbacks. He was yeah. the first quarterback off the board. So that's two things. You're was the he number the number one? one? That's how bad that draft was. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. And yeah. That, that's not a knock on Kenny. I'm just saying like he didn't get drafted until Pittsburgh was picking in the twenties, I think. So it wasn't one of these drafts where like, that doesn't happen anymore where a quarterback doesn't go in yeah. the top five, top 10. So it was, he was the first quarterback off the board expected to replace a hall of fame quarterback. Like that's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of pressure. The expectations were probably way higher than they should have been. Um, he was, and then three, Honestly, on top of that, that I didn't even talk about, that was the biggest reason. Maybe guy played at the University of Pittsburgh. Yeah, he went so from it's like Pitt to, yeah. local guy. I mean, th those that's a lot. You're the local guy. You're replacing a legend. You're the first quarterback off the board. I mean, you don't get any bigger of a pressure cooker than that. That's that's as big as it gets. He's so young too. He's going to have plenty of opportunities to develop and see, you know, a starting role at some point. Obviously, Hertz is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, so probably not anytime is he? in the immediate future. Well, I was going to say, Ticket, don't agree with that. I understand that, but I'm saying just if you look, you know, you pass the high see, test. You see Dak's brother throwing shade at fucking Jalen Hurts today? Did you see that? No. They no, what he said. First of all, I never even heard of Dak Prescott's brother until today, but now it's, of course, it's all over the internet. You want to know the fact that we don't even know his name is a, is a problem. You want to know his name? Want to know his name? Might as well yeah. be my, he's a problem. Because can we just do his his name is Tad Tad Prescott T A D T A D Prescott. He's a tad <laughs> bit of a problem. The tad awful name. Anyway, they interviewed him and they asked him who the top ten quarterbacks were in the league. Of course, he named his brother. He named uh, Burrow. He named Mahomes, Allen, yada yada yada. Aaron Rodgers. And then they're like, "What about Jalen Hurts?" He goes, "You said quarterback, not running back." Like Tad Prescott, oh, please. Your name oh, is Tad Prescott. Like, just stop. Just just don't do that. Just don't well, he better not have said Lamar then either. I'm pretty sure he said Lamar. Pretty sure he said this fucking guy. I mean, I talk a lot of shit about Jalen Hurts, especially he played last year. But he's more of a quarterback. Than yeah, no, Lamar it was, Jackson. It, it was, I mean, he had fucking he put uh, he put Joe Flacco up there. Like it was. Oh, it, it, oh, it is, I mean, it is. Ah, this is what I he's mean. He's trolling. Like, yeah, right, right. But I mean, like they made such a big deal out. But anyway, sure. But anyway, is sure. he a prospect? Is he like? Is he like a? No, I just think he's a guy. I just think he's a guy. Shut guy your named mouth. Tad. If, you're, if you're just a guy and if your name's Tad, shut your mouth. There you shut go. your mouth. Shut, 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 shut your mouth. Shut, 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 shut your mouth. You shut, shut your mouth. You shut your mouth. Excuse, Excuse me? Mouth. I sound stupid? You're interviewing for a role that uh, requires you to clean toilets and you're dressed in tuxedos. <laughs> <laughs> I like the tuxedos. Um, They're ironic. It's funny. I get it. I get it. Um, All right. On second thought. Tuxedos are a little bit fucked up. <laughs> onions and ketchup. Is that is that onions? <laughs> um, a lot of other guys on the move. Um, Kirk Cousins, we spoke about last week a little bit to the Falcons. This guy. Yeah, this Mac guy Jones gets the, the bag, man. Yeah. Every time the it's on. He's the goat. Achi Achilles the goat. tear. Achilles tear. Oh, just sign him to a hundred and eighty million dollar four year deal. Kirk, Kirk oh. has got God on his side, man, and you can't fuck with that. You just can't. <laughs> you just can't. He's a man of the Lord, and you know what? He's raking in the cash. Raking a yeah. hundred and eighty million dollars. Guys, four bag, years. I don't even know how much is guaranteed. Her, I mean, bro, he has been paid out every step. They said of the by way. Tw by twenty twenty seven, he'll have earned four hundred and twelve million. Are you fucking kidding me? No, this I'm guy's not. got the greatest agent on the planet, bro. Let not only that, he's got luck on his side. RG three was like the next prodigy, and he went down, and I'm just <laughs> cousins just stepped into the let fucking me, role. Let me say this about cousin Kirk. Because I give Cousin Kirk a lot of heat. I do, and I have historically. I've given Kirk Cousins he a lot of heat. He just doesn't step up to the big game, dude. I, that is that is the knock on him, and I do understand. But, you know, you can't deny how he is, you know, throughout. it. Consistent, he's a consistent quarterback. He's very consistent. He's very consistent. He is. You like that? Now, I think in Atlanta, he could really, with the offense that they have there, if they get it right with the coaching staff, I think he could be a serious problem. 
I do. Because that, so? that division is dog shit, man. I, I, I'm not buying that division at all. So You're not buying I, Baker and the Bucks? No. No. No, Joe, you know I'm not. So we, we no. No, I'm not. I mean, if the Saints could get a, a competent quarterback, like, I mean, that's a team that could we do some damage. We know you hate damage. Derek Carr. We know you hate the Saints. Well, they just I, signed who? Who did they, did they sign uh, Chase Young, right? Yeah. He's got yeah, to get a procedure for his neck. He's going to be out until uh, the regular season starts. He's going to miss like camp and shit. Wonderful. But. And not to mention last year, it looked like he was just standing up anyway. So I'm did not you, sure how much of a see, win that is. Did you see? <laughs> did no, you, the, the last game you, played, you looked unbelievable. Sure, you're right. The last you wanna, game you, you want to talk about a, a, a theft? Did you <laughs> see what the fucking Browns gave Jerry Judy today? Oh, no. no. A three-year is... extension, $41 million guaranteed. Guy hasn't done anything. He's never done anything. Nothing. Well, wa- watch him have the, the year of years. Oh, God. Amari Cooper looked pretty fucking good this last Dude. year with the Browns, too. And he was really nowhere to be seen. Jerry Judy years. last year was a fucking head case. Guy was Yeah, nuts. he was. Remember when he came in the league, his whole thing was like this. You've never seen footwork until you've seen Jerry Judy run a route. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, okay, well, how about he catches the ball, too? Because- <laughs> yeah, 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 that would be nice. That would be a bonus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. They're gonna be fascinating. They're gonna be fascinating to watch this year. Though. Whoa! I, I saw a big Whoa. old nut. I saw a big old nut. Big old a nut. Big old nut. <laughs> Got them big balls, Joey. Hey, by the way, happy Saint Joseph's Day, Joe. By the way. Oh well, Michael, you're the only person to wish me that aside oh, from my father. I put up a dedicated post for you on Instagram, a story. Did you? Wishing you a happy. I Saint haven't Joseph's seen it Day. yet. I haven't seen it's it. It's an yet. AI. It's you as an AI leprechaun. But that's by the way, neither, that AI. That's neither that here AI. Nor Bang job. We're not even going to get into that. That, that no, wasn't on me this that. time. I can't be blamed. Bone fucked me, man. It, it's doing something to your face. That is. I, I look like they're bizarre. calling me Ozempic Cutsy. You know why? <laughs> He's on Joe Zempic. <laughs> the photo That's that is awesome. being used for that, I look like a dopey fuck. We need a new photo. And that's just, it's I just gave, I thought the, all. Now, the photos you saw me submit after we recorded were great. They were great. I don't know why we changed that. I don't know either. Um, just a few other small moves. Uh, Mac Jones to the Jaguars, Raider to the Cardinals, Hal to the Seahawks, as we mentioned earlier, Drew Locke to the Giants, Minshew to the Raiders, Mayfield stays with the Bucks, and Darnold, a friend of ours, to the Vikings. Yeah, Vikings are gonna draft a quarterback, so I mean it I, I like they are. I, I think that's I think that's they're gonna try. I mean, I don't know. The run of quarterbacks could happen very, very quickly. You could have Bears go Caleb at one. You could have Washington go, uh, you know, Daniels or Drake May at two. You could have the Patriots go Drake May or the leftover at three. You could talk about three quarterbacks off the board quick, and then the Vikings have two first-rounders to play with now because they got the one from Houston. So they could be looking to go up and uh, taking, again, the, the name that keeps coming up with them is J.J. McCarthy as well. So it's like, I, I don't know. I don't know. It, it'll be interesting. Why would a team like that try to get like a Marvin Harris? I guess they got Justin Jefferson and Addison. Yeah, I mean, they don't yeah, really need... yeah. They don't need another one. But I I'm mean, saying if you're a could. team that has two picks, like high end, like, you know, you still got unbelievable quarterbacks that are going to go towards the middle of the first round, you know, like with, with even like, a, I think Bo Nix is going to be great in the NFL. So like, why not take a chance on, a, on an elite wide receiver? I don't yeah, I, I guess mean, the Vikings don't need it. Vikings you know, don't need a wide receiver. The, if the Giants rumors that the Giants are absolutely going quarterback at six, which is the rumor, or that they'll try and move up maybe even a little more depending on how things fall. If that's the case, then the Vikings have to make a move drastic enough to jump the Giants. And that's where it gets interesting because to move into the top five from wherever they are, I think they're in the teens. That's going to cost a lot. Even though you have two first rounders, they're bottom end first rounders. That's going to cost more than just those two picks. It's going to it's going to cost more than that to move into the top five of this draft once the quarterbacks like once the Giants the nuts. The Giants cannot take Drake May just on the principle. You you can't oh. go from a guy from Princeton or wherever he went, Duke. Danny Dimes, Duke, Duke. Yeah. and then to the Duke. UNC. Why don't we go to a Duke, proven Duke's program? Duke's biggest rival. Maybe they'll have a little locker room rivalry. Why don't you find a guy from a real program? I mean, this is uh, these guys ain't it, man. Hey, I mean, man, like, Tommy DeVito. <laughs> yeah. I mean Illinois draft a real one. Yeah. 
Yeah. Or go buy a real one. I, one or the other. Aren't I would be so furious as a Giants fan what they're doing. I mean, I, I would just But the be... Giants, here's the situation. I don't think they've got any good pieces across the board on offense. Def- their like defense they, is loaded. I understand that, but they, they don't loaded. they just lost their their all-star running back. They they lost they don't yeah. really have any wide receivers. They don't have like a, a, a top tier uh, tight end, because I'm sorry. I'm not looking at what's his name from the Raiders as a uh, as Waller. A fucking... Waller. Oh, this yeah, guy's hurt every fucking listen, game. The Giants, they they've made a couple moves with the O line that I think are good. The quarterback is still a mystery. How that's going to work out? Running back, I don't think they care. I think they'll roll with Singletary and just do it. But pass catchers, they they are woefully behind on pass catchers. They're I mean, horrible. Bad, but their defense may be so good with Thibodeau and now with Brian Burns acquired. They and lost yeah. McKinney. Dexter, yeah, but they got Dexter Lawrence, who's like the he's he had quietly the best year on D line in the whole league. Maybe he was a fucking monster. So their defense is going to be just is going to be better than fine. Both New really York good. teams have unreal defenses. Both. New yeah, York. now the Jets yeah. got Mike Williams today, so that helps. Did they get I Mike mean, Williams? Yeah. They did. Yeah, they did. They did. They did. If Which Aaron Rodgers doesn't uh, run for vice president, he's then done. Have that's a really done. Good offense. Uh, J- is it done now. Yeah, Robert Kennedy said he's not. He's not <laughs> taking him. Yeah, it's so already that's, over with. So that's done. So you got you know the Jets offense. You got Brees Hall. You got Garrett Wilson. You got now Mike Williams. I mean that's really something getting put together over there in New York too. I think they still need another wide out. Um, I think they know that. But their O line now too. They got Tyron Smith to play left tackle. They took the other tackle. They got another tackle. Um, in free agency. So it's going to be both the New York teams. It's going to be cool to see how they're going to approach the draft. It's going to be fun. This draft is going to be wild, wild. Who was, who was that wide receiver that they drafted last year for the, from the giants? Um, Hilton, oh, was it Jalen uh, Hilton, no, Jalen Hyatt, Jalen Hyatt. Yeah. yeah. Tennessee. Um, right. What happened to him, man? He, I, I thought he's he was going to be great. He's, there, so well, he's, a, he's, a, he's a, he's a seven route guy. I mean, he just runs. Yeah. That's the shit. I mean, so, I mean, that's fine. You just got to get the other pieces to compliment him and he'll sure. be good, you know, but they, they, they really, they, 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 they need like one premier guy wide out. They need one premier guy, but tough to come by. Tough to come. They don't grow on trees. They need a quarter running back yeah. and a running back. They need a lot, man. A lot. Running back. Yeah. You could kind of almost like you could kind of make shift that in the NFL. Now you could get a rookie fifth rounder. He could be awesome. You know what I mean? Like, that all goes as the offensive line goes, in my opinion. You know, of course, there's guys who are standout guys, like a Saquon or a CMC or a Derrick Henry or somebody. But, like, those guys are few and far between. I think it's more of, like, after you get through the top tier of guys, I think it's kind of like just these guys that just pop up. Like, who was the guy ticket from uh, from Houston two years ago? Wasn't that great this year? Was Pierce. Pierce. Yeah, Pierce. Like Damon Pierce. Yeah, like a guy Pierce. like that. Like, you don't really hear much about a guy like that coming out. He wasn't some kind of – like all world yeah. guy in college. And then, you know, he just gets in the right situation and plays well. So I think, I think they'll be all right, but you know, the dra- uh, again, the draft I think is going to be so fascinating, fascinating this year. How about a guy like Dondre Swift? Yeah. I love him. Yeah, I know. I would too. I love him. Um, All right. Let's move on to some golf. The players, Joe and I were there on yeah, it's awesome. Thursday, day one, um, watched a little bit there, but it ended up being wildly exciting coming down to the last uh, last round on Sunday. It was basically, it was Wyndham, it was Scotty, of course, who ended up winning. Brian Harmon was there. Xander, who, Xander of course. Xander Brian Xander. Harmon, the guy that Joe cannot stand. I, I get it. It's infuriating to watch. He's a lefty, too. You think I'd like him. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. But he just take. I mean, he stands over the ball for half. The an waggling hour. shit, the all the ticks. Yeah, that he's got it. Um, and then a heartbreaking, you know, last putt from Wyndham that lipped out like crazy. Joe went nuts, and uh, Scotty wins again. First guy to ever back to back at the players to defend the championship. Um, what'd you guys think? Scotty Scheffler's the best golfer in the world, man. Yeah, I mean, he's, yeah. He's, I don't even think it's particularly close. I said it's a funny thing. Uh, we were. Talking, uh, I was talking with Bob. This was on the Friday or the Saturday. And Scheffler was quite a ways back. I said, Scheffler is so crazy. He will find his way to come back and be like a top five, top, maybe even top three, like player in the field. For him to shoot eight under on the Sunday is just, and if you think the first few holes, he wasn't, he parred and he had to make a move. 
He eagled from like 93 yards out. He had yeah. an incredible yeah. shot that had a side <laughs> spin. That was one. But I've never seen, I don't know how you put side spin on the ball. And it just perfectly rolled in. And all of a sudden he was like two under. And then it was just like, boom, 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 yeah. boom. And I was like, oh my God, here he comes. The guy doesn't feel pressure. It's like when he's in that position, he is in the driver's seat and everybody else is watching him to the point where you haven't seen anybody like that for some time that's dominated, you know, to that extent. Um, it's pretty wild, man. It's pretty wild to watch. Um, you could not, you could not find a classier guy as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, he's just a, just a role model, just a through and through a guy you want to root for. Um, and man, I was reading a thing, uh, Mikey, he has won in two and a half weeks because he won the last tournament, uh, Arnold Palmer, and then at the Bay Hill Invitational, and then he just won the players. He, in two and a half weeks, he eight has million. made eight, eight yeah. and a half yeah. million dollars, yep. um, which is equated to over $1.07 million per round, which is the equivalent of fifteen thousand seven hundred dollars a swing. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> nice. That's nice money. That's a nice that's money. a pretty nice piece. That's nice, a pretty that's nice, a nice piece. piece. Super nice piece. <laughs> oh, my nice, um, super nice piece. Super man. nice piece. Um, but, um I mean it's just unbelievable. And I will say this that like for all the talk about PGA, you know, with Liv being there, it's falling, they're losing players. This was as exciting a finish as I've seen in a long time. And and it went literally down to the last putt, which should have forced a playoff. Uh, I thought it was a tremendous, tremendous watch um, late Sunday afternoon. I thought it was so much fun to see these guys going neck and neck. Scheffler, eight under. Shoffley and Wyndham back and forth. And then Harmon was sneaky in there, too. Um, what, a, what a hell of a, a 50-year celebration for the, the players. I thought it was unbelievable. Um, and if you're the PGA, that's their signature tournament. That's theirs. They they had to be over the moon with how it how it turned out. Mikey, any thoughts? Yeah, I think um, Wyndham to me has looked so good um, over the past two tournaments. I, I he's playing some lights out lights out golf and for him not to win that and forget the lip out i mean the lip out is what it is like yeah it was halfway down the uh, hole. insane insane but just yeah. i think what joe said his first statement sums up the entire conversation just scotty scheffler is just the best player in the world and and i don't think it's particularly close either and and i think he may he may win the fucking masters and i i I mean, it gets he's five to one favorites yeah. and he's putting his, his knock has always been his putting because he's the best ball striker in all of golf. And now he's got this new putter and he's making everything. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, like if he's going to putt the way he's been putting, like, I just don't see how he's going to lose more often than he wins. Obviously it's golf. So you're not going to win every tournament. I understand that. But in terms of like chalky picks, top five, top 10, you know, I just think he's going to do that more often than not. And oh, he, he's not even plus money on the top 10 finish anymore. Yeah, I know. I mean, I know. that's how it's unbelievable. I know. It's so is, guaranteed, which, which is sickening. Um, But yeah, I, I, I think, um, you know, awesome tournament. Obviously, like like Joe said, Sunday was incredible down the stretch. I mean, so tight at the top. These guys were playing and, you know, you had a guy like Matsuyama, who I picked and gave out as my winner for the tournament, who I thought played great but just could not keep up with these guys at the top, like, like Xander and, and, and Scotty and Wyndham, they were just like, it was just like an assassination with these guys. Like it was like shot for shot. But when Scotty, when when Scotty hit that, when Scotty hold that Eagle, it was like, okay. Like, yeah, like that was nasty. too. It just took a left turn. It was absurd. Just absurd. And uh, you know, I also just uh, we're speaking on golf. I did see the the John Rom uh, menu for the Masters, and it looks looks pretty good. That's right. Really, what has he got going it's on? It's all Sp- it's all Spanish fare, and I love Spanish food, so it's like it does is. He got like, paella in there? No, he doesn't. But like, it is authentic, like all Spanish food, and it looks fucking sick. I think Matsuyama's was the best. I that looked cool in. too. Yeah, he had yeah. Kobe, yeah. He had like Wagyu beef, yeah. and yeah. then he had like he had everything, yeah. man. He had like. It, he had oh my god he had like sable fish like black cod oh, and like man. oh my god dude, i would love looked... to go to that dinner man that would be a great dinner to go to whereas man. who was it yeah. one before him had just a terrible terrible uh meal was it um 
Did I thought Scotty won it? Wasn't before. it Scotty yeah. right yeah, before Scotty. Matsuyama? Yeah, Scotty. Yeah, I think it was Scotty. Was not Scotty had like good. a regular like American menu. But it was like American what? menu. Yeah. yeah, but you know what? I mean, he's yeah. say what you want about his golf. He is probably the best player. I mean, he is the best player in the world. That's how here's Matsuyama. He's vanilla man. Oh yeah, he's vanilla but, guy. But very much so. Very much so. But you know what? Hey, listen, listen to this. Listen to this best. meal from Matsuyama. In 2022, <laughs> assorted sushi, sushi, sashimi, and nigiri, yakitori chicken skewers, then miso glazed black cod, Miyazaki <laughs> yeah. wagyu, and then a fucking Japanese strawberry shortcake. I mean, oh my. Wait till you see that ROM menu, though, when you take a look at it. Not now, but when you look at it, you're going to be like, holy shit, this is wild. It seems like there's a lot of items, too. Very, very, very heavy menu. Really? Like, oh, yeah. I mean, Rom could eat, man. Look at the fucking guy. You know that guy's putting him down. He told bro. us he wants to do a taco challenge. He's a thick us. boy. He's a thick boy. He did say it's that. Span- yeah. It's called a Spanish feast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Oh, my. God. Yeah. Dude, yeah. It's like- There's like 20 Holy courses. Shit. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. they got a Biricos? That is yeah. the best ham in the world. What is What is that? It's a ham. It's like it's a, a it's, it's, it's a, a beer and ham. It's, it's a like corn top- fed ham. It's like the wagyu of ham. Sick. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> to- I knew he would go nuts over this. That's why I brought it up. Bro, this is this is legit. Well, 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 uh, read, read it out. Read it have, out. Have EA throw the graphic of the menu up there. Yeah, I mean, but there's too much stuff now. What I like is he gives a choice of for the main course. Yeah, he got either the uh, either ribeye. Or he's got a turbo. Turbo is one of the best fish. Dick, you ever had turbo? I I don't even know what this guy's ordering. <laughs> I don't know what this is, man. Is it's just a type of fish? Turbo is it's it's a sensational white fish. It's a sensational white. Fish. It's like if you see it on the menu, it's so high. It's a must price order. It's a must and order. so high end, it's unbelievable. Normally they fillet it right at That's the, table the thing for you. that really amazes me about these masters dinners. Is it just like you could just name whatever the fuck you want? Like you just <laughs> you just name it and listen. Augusta's gonna give it to you. That's it. There's that is no, they have yeah. to. That's incredible, man. You're I mean, the that is of, a, of the masters. Uh, I mean, yeah, but still, you would think maybe they put a little limitation on it. Maybe say, listen, we can't, we can't. Bring Michael, it. what's your masters dinner? If you got oh, it? I don't know, man. I don't know. Twenty four karat gold wrapped uh, prime <laughs> ragu, uh, bone in tomahawk ribeye. I, I don't. Alaskan know. king crab covered in caviar. Sure, uh, there were uh, Alaskan <laughs> wow. uh, the seafood tower at Augusta. If it was good at Ruth Chris, you could only imagine what it would look like. I got a gust Joe. Okay. He wants, to, he wants to put good. muscles in Amen Corner and then chuck them right out of the fucking water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can also go with the sensational whitefish, Mikey. That's also an option that you turbo. can go with. Turbo. The turbo. turbo. Oh, turbo's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really bizarre looking fish, too, Tick, that if you saw it, you'd be like, this, this looks like it's terrible. Okay. But, um, but it's it's I'll show you. It almost looks like this is what the fish looks like. Oh, okay. I've seen it. It looks, never... it looks like it would be disgusting. It honestly, but you actually, it honestly you looks lay it. It looks like a fluke. It. it looks like fluke. That's what it looks like. It looks like fluke. You but it certainly it is not fluke. Look at that one. It's 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 unbelievable. It's so rich and Turbo. it's it's just flaky. It's delicious. Is that one delicious of the fish that fish. they like kind of keep in intact and then just Kind of sear it the way it is, and then it and comes then out. Like, yeah, you slice yeah. it table side. It's unbelievable, man. Oh wow. Okay. I mean, maybe <laughs> one day. Maybe one day I'll get there. maybe a carbone. Maybe they'll have turbo on the menu. Carbone. They nice. probably do. And if they do, you don't even want it'll be. It won't even say the price. It'll say a little thing. MP. Market. Market. Yeah. Market price. A little market price. Yeah. So you don't even know until you ask. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they'll be like, and they'll look at you. You really want to know? You really want to know? It's to the point where if you go to a restaurant of that caliber and you ask what the market price is, they're like, like they're like, this guy doesn't belong here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you're asking what the market price is, yeah, don't I would clearly ask. don't I know ask. the market price. I wouldn't ask. So just keep it. It's more open. fun, honestly, not to ask and just see what happens at the end. Wow, well, it's it's not fun if you're paying the bill. Well, no, but I'm gonna make Bob pay on on Thursday, so there you go. It could be a little credit card roulette play. <laughs> oh man! Then you'll get a real then you'll get a real bail job from me. Then I am not <laughs> going. That's uh, I'm not playing that game. Uh, credit card roulette makes for a great Instagram live. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. 
I tell you, if we do that, I've been I, banged I, I so many 100% times. Hundred percent, am gonna get stuck if we do that. hundred percent. No, I lose every time, Mikey. If you haven't done it in ages, I lose every single time. All right, all right. You could get lucky. It could land on the jet. Oh, you know man, what you do, I by would, the way. Yeah. If you get, if you, if you ever have, here's here's a, a, a word of caution to anybody, any listener who's ever doing the you know credit card roulette. Which, by the way, if you don't, I've never heard of it. It's essentially at the end of the meal, the, the bill's placed. Everybody puts their card down. And then the waiter is supposed to, some waiters don't do this, and that's not okay. They're supposed to pick <laughs> blindly a card, and then that card gets banked for the entirety of the purchase. So if you have a five or two, like we have a six person dinner coming out on Thursday. So you you have one of six chances you're either gonna get everything or you're you're scarred. You're gonna get you're gonna have to take a second loan out on your what card. you can't do. And I've learned this the wrong way. If you have a good card, like if you have like a card that's yes. heavy or that, that that feels good, the server, just by feeling it, they're like, I'm going to fuck this guy over because this guy clearly has a lot of money. So you put the shittiest card Shit. that you have I'm putting my fucking, I'm putting fault. my fucking Costco card in there, dog. Yeah, <laughs> you put a card that's like ripped, <laughs> broken, falling apart. And then if they pick you, then you switch to your nice cards. You get the points. But at that point, it won't matter. <laughs> if this waiter feels five beautiful metal cards and one flimsy plastic one, oh. nine, and she picks okay. that one or he picks that one. That's a dirty move, though, man. That's a that's scumbag filthy. move. You can't that's do that. That's a scumbag now, move. Now, the, the American Express card I have is significantly, not right. that it's any better, but it's significantly heavier. And so they'll just pick that. Yeah, like and then I, would, I would not put my Apple card in the mix because it's made of metal. Mm. So, like, there's no right. chance I would use that. Zero. Zero chance I would use that. I know I would get fucked. Oh, you're going to get bad yeah, no, if you no, do no, that. No, no. I'm telling It'd you, I'm going to put my Costco card. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck to all participants. You just put a library I'm a, I'm a, card in there. I'm like yes. a Chili's credit card roulette guy. There you like go. We go. I'll take you to Chili's and we sure. can play that. Yeah. I'll just pick it up myself. Take there your you carbone go. guy through and through. <laughs> you have my Bank of America card, ain't? <laughs> um, all right, guys, let's move on. Let's do one more quick thing. Very quickly, Aaron Donald's retiring, and then we'll move on to who's a problem. Thoughts on Aaron Donald hanging it up. Yeah, all-time generational talent, Mount Rushmore defenders, in my opinion, up there with Lawrence Taylor, Reggie White. Um, Are you surprised uh, he retired, like, that he didn't play no, another? No, you know, a guy like that, man, you're in the trenches. It's not like you're playing off ball. You know, you're getting fucking hit every single play. You're getting fucking pounded. He's won his ring. Uh, he's won multiple uh, all pros. He's won multiple defensive player of the year that you're talking about a guy who has nothing left to prove it's Aaron Donald. So no issues with him walking away. Um, you know, I'll always remember Aaron Donald as the guy that got picked right after the bears picked in that draft bears could have had him and they needed him and they were one pick away and he wasn't there. And the rest is history. Great career. And, uh, again, in my opinion, a Mount Rushmore def defender, just, just one of the most dominant, especially at a position that the position he played in the modern day NFL to be as dominant as he was, you don't think of the interior D tackles anymore in modern NFL. You don't, you think of the edge guys, the edge guys, the edge guys, everybody wants the edge guy, this guy demanding triple teams, fucking triple teams with a chip. I mean, this guy was just as dominant as you could possibly be. And by all accounts, I mean, listen, yeah. I mean, I think he had a little mean streak in him, but I mean, you play like that. You're going to, you that's just comes with the territory in my opinion. So just a freak, a total freak. And I'm I'll sure never the, forget. the quarterbacks are relieved that he's he's done. Oh, I'll never forget the first time I ever saw him was on Hard Knocks with the Rams and Jeff Fisher was the coach. And they did a whole episode on this guy. And it was like, who is, who the fuck is this guy? Like, he looked like he got the, the gap between his teeth. He kind of looked like a dork. He got, but he was just built like a shit brick house and was like, they were showing him in, in, in you know, in, in the fucking training camps, he was just outworking everybody. He was like, they were like, I was like, oh my God, this guy is a He's problem. a unit, man. He's a unit. Holy I mean, shit. for him to play that position and look and his body look the way it does, that's not normal. Like, that's not, that's not okay. Like, that's not, when you line up against a guy like that, as big as he is, like, he should not have a six pack of abs. Like, that's mm -hmm. not normal, dude. Like, he is just a genetic freak of nature and he played like it he played like it and he was fast as lightning too. oh my god so quick his first step oh my god oh, yeah sickening um well the rams will definitely be uh 
Worse without him, but definitely we'll have to figure it out. Definitely. Um, yeah. All right, guys, let's move on to who's a problem. Um, Joey D, I'm going to start with you today. Who's a problem? I, I got one today for you, Tick. Um, sure. Anthony Edwards. I know we don't talk a lot about the NBA, but I'm telling you right now, if there were more guys playing as hard as this guy's playing in the NBA, it would be instrumentally a better league. This guy is making highlight real after <clears throat> highlight real. Do you see the dunk? Yeah, the dunk. Online? The dunk. I mean, insane. oh my god! It looked like he just destroyed that. <laughs> I, I, I mean, he and did. then and then like two weeks ago or three weeks ago to win the game, he had a block where he literally came flying across the court. I mean, this guy is playing unreal basketball. He's got the Timberwolves at first in the in the West. I mean, uh, he was by the way he was sensational in Hustle in that movie. You ever watch it with with yeah, uh, with Sandler. Uh, Sandler? Yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, oh, was good. the guy yeah, could do it all, man. He's yeah. unbelievable. And um, I, I just think it's like just I I know we shit on the NBA a lot, but this guy has been incredibly entertaining to watch. He has a huge night. It seems like almost every single night, one of the top scoring talents in the NBA, but he can do it all. Um, and he's pretty soft-spoken. He's not like like some of these guys in the NBA who think their shit don't stink. Like, I just, I got to give kudos where kudos are due, man. This guy is tearing up the league. He's unbelievable. The Timberwolves are first in the West, and I, you know, he's a definite problem. Yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, that move, he's, he's wildly... He's such a great actor in that movie. He makes you want to hate him in that fucking movie. But that was the whole point. He wasn't stiff at all. He played the part. Be like, he was acting better than Adam Sandler and everyone else oh, in that movie. Oh, yeah. I thought he gave the best performance in that movie. I thought yeah, he was, was... Yeah, it was good. It was shocking. It was good. Um, I'll go next, and then we can end with Mikey. Uh, this guy's been a bit of a problem for me specifically for a little bit now because I just continue to bet on him, and he just continues to come in oh, second no, instead sick. of first. And I hate to say it because no, you know, don't he's a good friends it, with yeah. you guys, but it's it's Xander Shoffley, man. It's Xander Shoffley. <laughs> guys make it bank, man. He's making he a is, lot of money, but he's, he's losing me a bunch of money. Problem. I keep thinking, I keep thinking this guy's finally gonna like this is gonna be it. And he he still played really well on Sunday. He was, but he was leaving everything, all these putts short. He needed to birdie on 16 and 17, and he missed both of them barely by one or two rotations. 17, he, he left barely it, missed. He, he left it short again, man. No, 17, it rolled by. On was it rolled? That was that the one that rolled by? Maybe I'm thinking it's it rolled eight, by but. on the left. Yeah, he it didn't break in as much as but he thought. But man, this guy's got to just break through and win something. It has been a long time. You're right. He's making a bunch of money. I'm sure as caddy loves it. I mean, they're making a ton, but it's like he's got to get through, man. He's got to make a statement, and it's just, it just I can't keep betting on him. But you know what? I'll do it. I, I will do it again. He's definitely good enough to win. I, I yeah. wouldn't take. I, I would take him top ten. Tick top ten is a good bet for him because he he consistently has a great opening like couple days to where he kind of puts himself in position where he's top of the leaderboard or right in the mix. So I think a top 10 bet is, is, is probably a lot better than, than to win it overall. It's like, tough. A lot of these guys, like look at Wyndham. Wyndham took what, four years. He couldn't win a tournament. Dude, winning, and he winning won, tournaments. And it's just like, it takes like the monkey off your back. It's like, all of a sudden it's like you, you're, you're playing with house money. It's tough to take a guy to win the, to win a tournament that hasn't won a tournament. Oh, in like, in, like even Rory, bro. Like, like he's always, always so high to like his odds just to win the tournament. Aren't the greatest odds really. And it's just, he, he just, just never does. I just it's he like came just, close at the PGA and then he just couldn't do it. But that's what yeah. I'm saying though. It's like it's it's so hard, man. It's, it's a mindset. Crazy. Like you look at a guy like Brooks Kepka, he just goes into it like he is gonna win and yeah. no one's gonna beat him. And yeah. you almost have to have that mentality. Like some of these guys are more a little bit more timid, a little bit softer spoken. If you got to have that kind of, not that I know anything about having pizzazz in the golf course, because I don't have it, but I'm saying, Man. I think like, especially some of these majors, like you're going up against the biggest field in golf. You almost have to go in there with a bit of a chip on your shoulder. Like you're going to win. And you you want somebody to convince you otherwise. And I think that that's the difference, man. It's it's, I, I mean, I've never won anything and let alone a tournament. So who knows, but. Oh, that's not true. You yeah, won the, life. the Aloha. You oh, also won the Aloha. 
I won the Aloha one year, well, uh, two years. That last one was special. I, I played uh, my best <laughs> round of golf ever in the final round. I felt like I just won the Masters. There oh go. God, that was sensational. But yeah, no, I, I agree, Tick. Yeah, he he just he's that's the sickest thing I have ever heard, bro. I did like that a whole is, Instagram story. That is I so went off, dude. Sick, bro. I played a bad national. Mikey, this course was one of the most picturesque, most beautiful. It, it was beautiful. in the Rockies yeah. in, in Canada. Yeah, it looked and it very was just nice. Like, you know, when you play a course that's so beautiful and you're so used to just botching it that when you actually play, I shot three over par is the best round I've ever had. I've never come close to shooting that again. And I was playing with sticklers. My buddy bears all he watch. He won't give any gimmies. Right. Maybe you have to put everything out. Right. So it was like, it was like a true testament to like shooting three over. And that's, it was, it was an unbelievable feeling, but going back to what you're saying, Tick, <laughs> you're right. I, I mean, I mean, dude, you're right. Joffley, he's got it. He's got it. Finally put the put the nail on the head and and finally win one of these you look like for a brief moment there you were taken back to that moment at pamp and that you were so living special. it all over again. yeah i did, yeah, I did. Tick, you're a, a mountain trip guy down, tick a little trip you're a mountain guy day. you would have loved it tick you would have loved I would have. it so I, much. I, I remember when uh remember, yeah. grant was playing there at some point too like any it's, it's just yeah you're right it's a beautiful course um i'd like to go there and film it one day um we should we should. I agree. I really think that would be a great trip. We got to get back to Canada at some point. But um, they would gladly have us. Yeah, Mikey. Who is a problem this week? I'm going to stick with the golf theme. I watched. Um, I watched the new season of Full Swing. I finished it already on Netflix. And uh, wow, this guy, man, this one guy, he oh, had to I... be one of the most annoying guys that I. You talk about a guy with just an arrogant arrogant just came off like a total jackass clown dustin johnson's coach his swing coach or whoever the fuck he is the guy was always wearing black <laughs> this guy was such a bozo the way he was talking about <laughs> live and the way he was talking about dustin it, it was the most weird at, at, at one point i was just like they gotta stop they gotta stop going back to this guy on his couch Nobody cares. I haven't watched it yet. Oh, my Joe, just wait till you watch it. And then let me know if you think and take do the same. If you watch it, let me know what you think. He is. He came off as just so like just like like a little kid who it almost felt as though he was trying to justify again, like Liv's existence and his guy being in Liv and like like he, he, he was talking like he was on the attack from somebody, but he wasn't like it was a concept like he was on the defensive, but it didn't seem like. Like nobody was coming at him. Nobody was coming at Dustin Johnson. So I don't know what that was all about. But man, it was uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable. He's a problem, that guy. I'd get a new swing. <laughs> I, I would. Dustin hasn't won anything in a million years either. So fuck it. True. Well, I mean, yeah, he's yeah. Oh, he's no one's watching whatever he's doing anymore. That's correct. Um, no one watches it. Um, all right, guys, let's move on to viewer questions. We'll knock out a few of these, and then we'll call it. A podcast. Um, first question is for Mikey, actually. It's from Alex Friedlander. Will Mikey Mulligans ever tee it up again? Wow. Oh, yeah. I'm playing next Friday. There you go. Because it feels my like first, the content hasn't been there in a my while. My first round next Friday. I mean, guys, I live in Jersey. It's it been was, a fucking it was cold. It's been it a cold. nuclear winter all year. So, By it's the like, way, we're coming up in two days. Is it cold? Is it warm? What, what are we, cold. Am I, am I bringing the, the sweater? You're looking at 40s. 40s? You're, you're looking at 40s, oh, dog. You're oh, 40s. dear heavens. You're I was like, at, I'll pack a... A 40s, sweater. I got yeah. a, I've got a fifties. Let's let me look. 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 Oh, it's it gonna be even colder like... in Boston too, Joe. You're gonna yeah. you're gonna definitely want something. All right. So Thursday, high of forty one. Oh my! Friday, Lord. Friday, high of forty six, and then rain the entire weekend after that. Well, we leave on Saturday. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, at least there's Yeesh. no rain, but dress warm. Dress warm. Forties. Yeah, it was like eighty five. So that's why. Yeah, that's why I haven't like. I mean, it's there's nothing to do. I mean, next week, next Friday, I'm hoping we get out and there's no rain. So we'll see. Yeah, fair enough. I actually got a quick question for you guys, just for me, um, because I'm a fan of you guys. Is I'm definitely gonna watch a movie tonight. Have is there anything good out there? No. Have you you haven't seen there's anything? There's a recently? movie that I want to watch. It's on. You have Netflix. Yeah. I haven't seen it, but I, I it's on my list to watch. It's about the uh, Argent is it the Argentinian or Ecuadorian like soccer team. They take a flight through the Andes and the plane crashes. Yeah, and yeah, it, yeah, it yeah, looks yeah, yeah. it looks tremendous. It looks like a real thriller. Like it looks 
the the just watch the trailer tick okay it, it, it looked i saw the trailer and i was like i gotta watch that i have not watched it but it is on my list of movies to watch i have got is it, a, is it a documentary or is it a movie no it's a movie it's an okay. actual movie watching it's like some good remade. shows but i i don't know about movies I, I don't know i i watch all old movies like i don't know like new sure. stuff i haven't seen anything good new but Everyone's i haven't seen the me to flower watch the moon thing Oh, oh yeah. Dune, Dune, too. Dune Two. I mean, if you go to, I haven't that. watched Dune yeah. One yet. Oh, Dune, Dune One, two, Dune One is sick. Dune is sick. Is it really sci-fi though? It. Yeah, I mean, to a degree, but not like stupid. It, it, listen, Dune is great, and I heard Dune Two is even better. So I haven't. Yeah, seen my brother Dune said it was yet. it was exceptional. But Dune Two is supposed to be like incredible. So. I got to go to the movie theaters because I yeah, remember the first one just out. showed up on Max. No, yeah, the no, first June, one you yeah, can watch. First one, the second one's in theaters still. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Fair enough. Um. All right. Next question comes from Kyle Schaefer. Favorite free agency move for any team so far? Third question. Uh, Atlanta. Atlanta with Kirk Cousins. I think that is. The, I think that is the move for Atlanta. Atlanta has pieces on offense. Um. They, they, you know, you got to tip your cap when a team drafts a guy and quickly realizes, oh shit, and just pulls the plug and rips the bandaid off and doesn't fuck around with it. And I respect that. And Desmond Ritter had to go and bringing in a guy like Cousins gives them automatic credibility in the division in a weak division. I think it's a good move. It's a move that should put them in the playoffs this year uh, right away. It's not like it's going to be a wait and see game with him if he stays healthy and he could play. With, with Pitts and with Drake London and with uh, Bijan Robinson and whoever else they're going to add when they may add them. And, and, and now Darnell Mooney, I mean, they, they, they'll be fine. Atlanta's going to be a, a very, I mean, I think they're going to be a, a pretty good team in the NFC, especially the NFC, considering it's the weaker conference. I think they're going to be good. So for me, it's, it's Kirk to Atlanta. Joseph. I'm going to go with a move that I thought was huge, and I, I don't think it got nearly the amount of coverage that it should have. Derrick Henry to the Baltimore Ravens. I, I mean, I just think this guy still has some wear, and, and like he's still got some tread on those tires. And I just think that like putting him as the lead back on that team, it opens up so much for Lamar now and the passing game. If Mark Andrews gets healthy and gets back, they got pieces there. Uh, I, I I love everything about it. I think they're a running team. They're the best running team in the league this that's year. Why, and now why. you add Derrick Henry. I think he's just going to plow, especially if you get close to the goal line, yeah. you could give the ball to Derrick Henry on the one yard line. You could have yes. Lamar roll out. They are going to be able to do so much with that guy there. Uh, as long as he stays healthy. Now, Mikey, you mentioned that the Baltimore Ravens have had a history of running backs going down. Yeah. It's so not even that for me though. It's like, for me, the move is okay. I just, I don't see the, like the real excitement in it only because like Baltimore could always run the ball. They could always yeah, run. Now like, they, they got an absolute yeah, bruiser, man. I, to, yeah, it's I, not a, it's not a sexy style of winning games, but I think they've got a great defense. I think they can dominate time of possession. I think and they need I just, pass catchers, bro. <clears throat> I think they need more pass catchers. That's what I I mean to me. Well, Baltimore's maybe they go and get somebody up. in the draft. I mean, yeah, listen, there's yeah. a lot of good pass catchers. No, there are I just for think sure, it sets sure. them up in such a good spot. I think Mark Andrews is going to come back and be what he was. They really missed him when they needed him. And I know he came back for the playoffs, but he was for all intents and purposes, a decoy. Um, but I, yeah, I agree. If they get a good pass catcher to go along with Zay flowers looked unbelievable. Uh, I really do think that, that it just opens up the play action pass. It opens up so much for Lamar. I think they're already one of the top teams in the AFC. I think it's a huge move. I, I really do. I, I think it's, I think Henry's going to have another big year for them, man. I agree. Um, all right, I'll go. I'll stay with the running back, but with a different team. Um, Saquon. I, I, sure, Saquon's a good one, but not who I'm going with. Um, I I really, really think that Josh Jacobs to the Packers is a big old move. I think you guys are positioning yourselves. But Aaron Jones was really good too, Tick. Yeah, but this guy's going to be more reliable. I mean, he wasn't – he hadn't – you guys were using A.J. Dillon, Aaron uh, – Well, they re-signed Dillon now. 
Yeah, but you're not going to need to use him the way you've been no. using him the last couple of years. I mean, I think you're just giving um, Jordan Love more pieces. I think you're going to get a wide receiver or somebody in the I'd draft. love him to get Higgins. I'd love him to go out and make a sure. play and get a guy like, I mean, imagine sure. Higgins with Jordan Love, and then you got Watson and Dubs and all these other guys, and then you got Jacobs. I mean, that would be pretty fucking special. I agree, though. Jacobs is, is, is an all-around back and tick for fantasy. I think he could have a huge year for the for the Packers. Good too. I mean, you guys have got to be the favorite in that that division right now. All well, those Bears with Caleb Williams. No, Detroit. Sure. Detroit's Detroit's, <laughs> Detroit's, the, Detroit's still the favorite. I like the Packers a lot, but yeah, you're probably right. It probably is Detroit. Um, it's going to be a much better question. division this year. Yeah, division is yeah. going to be tough this year. Yep. One more. Last one comes from Jack Molichak, most famous athlete slash person celebrity. Uh, from your hometown or your area where you grew up? Oh, easy. Burnaby Joe Sackick, man. Fucking absolute sure. legend. Even I know Joe Sackick. Uh, I mean, yeah, that guy was just, he was, he was monumental. They have um, about five minutes from my house. There's um, where Burnaby Minor was. They have a street named after him. It's Joe Sackick Way. Really? It's right where he grew up. He, he grew up That's playing cool. Burnaby, Burnaby Minor Hockey Association. Um yeah, Joe Sackick. I mean, that guy is unbelievable. Yeah, he was. Mikey? Was, was, was. Right. D- the Diesel, Shaq, Newark, New Jersey, man. Really? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. The Diesel. Can we get huh. the picture of Mikey V with Shaq? <laughs> <laughs> Can we get it to Mr. Anderson? Uh, dude, I, 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 in my it whole, just goes to show. In my whole life, dog. Guy's. Yeah, in my whole life, I was going to say, like, my whole life, I've only felt, like, small. Like, maybe, like, Two or three times in my entire existence on this planet, two or three times, Shaq wow. was Shaq was definitely one of those times. That's He's just a nuts. fucking massive, massive human being. Massive. Were you a big Shaq guy? Like, were you a big Lakers guy? I was a big Shaq on the fucking Orlando Magic guy when he was oh, wow. like, I like in fucking backboards. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, like I loved Shaq. I mean. I love Shaq when he was with the Lakers too. Like I was always like, I was just in awe of Shaq. I don't think there's anybody of my age bracket who grew up watching Shaq who wasn't like Shaq was just so different. Like Shaq was just different. Like I had never seen anything like that. I mean, you <laughs> saw a center, you saw big centers in the NBA and guys who could twinkle toe a little bit and, you know, like Hakeem and the hook shots and all this, but you never saw a dog like that. Who was that big no. and just that athletic. I mean, he was a he was a legitimate coming out of he, LSU. He was a he, beast when he yeah. could move and he was a little bit on the lighter side. He was a fucking nightmare. I mean, he was I, a you know, nightmare. I might get. I think arguably he was his best when he was with the Lakers. No one could stop him. No, he no, was he was. Truck. I mean, him he and was Co- a fucking truck. Him and, him and Kobe were just. I oh, mean, it's as good as you it had can. to guard Kobe and then good Kobe would just lay up an alley. Good as, it, him as good as it gets. As good oh, as it gets. Man. Yeah. And now he's as good as it gets on the broadcast. He's still one of my he's, favorite. Yeah, people. he's great. He's great. I love he's so Shaq. Funny. He's so funny. He's still doing like the general commercials. Oh, the still general. Got his, his shoes at Walmart. <laughs> he's selling Epson printers, by the way. I just Shaq, got one from him hey, two listen, days ago. What about good, Icy Hot? Icy Hot. Yeah, Icy Hot. Icy Hot. He like dunks in like the. The like the fucking backboard breaks out of ice, <laughs> and then he dunks it. It's like an inferno coming out. Shaq just keeps those checks coming in, dog. He just keeps those checks coming in. I can't. I, I'm not hating him for that. Good for him. Good for him. Yeah, good for him. Yeah, indeed. good for him. Uh, I Happy I don't know him. if there's any athletes that are from where I'm from. I don't know if there's any celebrities from where. There's a lot of people near me. I guess was it near athlete me. or celebrity? Is it any person? Oh, athlete, well, where would you classify? Because you grew up in Jersey. Celebrity, dog. You got Sinatra. You got Springsteen. I mean, you got, I mean, it's, it's, it's not. Well, am I just picking all of New Well, I'm really from Bucks County, Pennsylvania, which is, oh, okay, uh, okay. I mean, I guess Bradley Cooper's from not far away. That's go. a big one. He's go. a good one. Bradley. Yeah. I do love him. It just like feels weird to say he's exactly from where I'm from, but close enough. Yeah. Um, all right, guys, another fun one. Went long on this one, like about an hour and a half. Uh, good time, though. I mean, things are ramping up here with March Madness. Uh, finally, something interesting, you know, other than free agency and NFL for us to kind of sink our teeth into. But that's another episode of The Sports. And as always, that's Mikey. That's Joseph. I'm Neil. And we will see you guys next week. 